Hello everyone, and welcome back to our Microsoft Flight Simulator Evolution of Aircraft Design. This is our final video in the series, especially in the general aviation side, and this will be covering 2000 and up. And we're going to be taking a look at two kind of typical aircraft of this generation. Again, like I said, I'm sticking to a more of a general aviation theme than jets. There's just too much of that to be able to cover in a series like this. So we start this one with something a little different. And I look at this airplane right, right away, you go, uh, yeah, that's a little different. Uh, that looks mine a little bit like a diamond. Uh, you got the engine in the back, looks kind of conventional. And things get even weirder when you get on the inside. Uh, first of all, you'll notice the prevalence of digital technology. Uh, everything's around here. Uh, for those of you who drive cars of this era, you're very, very familiar with having little displays like this built into the car. You'll also notice that all my gauges are simplified and kind of have this like futuristic sort of look here. You can see there's my little white airspeed. Everything we're used to is actually all built into this. Uh, you'll also notice that from an operational perspective, we still have our AB both start kind of a thing like that. And of course, we have the million little warnings and we have our little idiot tests here too, if we need them. Uh, when you push this, everything turns red. I love the fact that they're just click, 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 click buttons. And again, a lot of things came out of cars. Uh, you also see we've got this really aggressive stitched leather and everything like that. It's very different. So when we take a look at our wings, which we've been observing, you'll see again the prevalence of those composite materials as opposed to using a conventional metal in order to make it a little bit better. These actually fold up. It's actually kind of cool. And you'll also see we still have a lot of aerodynamic innovations. We have a little dog's tooth right here. We have these nice flush flaps uh, when we need to utilize them. And the reason I wanted to start with this airplane was to just see how much of the pilot experience has changed. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll give this thing full power. Again, we have a relatively small engine here. Notice we have an airspeed indicator that indicates from zero, uh, something that's very different. Notice that our altitude is simplified. And the other thing I want you to notice, and this is really, really big, is the fact that this aircraft is a light sport or lighter sport aircraft. This one is not designed to be, I'm going to fly 45 hours. As a matter of fact, you'll notice there's a very little directional indication anywhere on this plane. You'll actually notice that we have it over there on our little maps display. Again, almost as if this thing is designed to be on the back of a trailer and now you're supposed to kind of like fly around, you know, wherever you're taking your RV to kind of a thing like that. And it's just so typical of how things have changed. And the other thing I find very fascinating too is when you look over there on the right hand side at the RPM gauges. You can see that it's the same gauge, but it's got a different look to it. Uh, you can also see our attitude indicators. Uh, they're all digital. You can see the presence of an AOA. Uh, this is a lift reserve is what they call this one. This is one of those instruments that we've barely seen at all. And one of the things we can see uh, kind of looking through this is it's all there. It's just simplified. It's optimized. Everything about it is designed to make the, our experience as the pilots simpler. Uh, one of the things they do get a kick out of that I wish we had more of are those angle of attack. Notice, by the way, I cut the throttle all the way to zero on this thing, just how fast it slows down. But also notice that everything is just clean. Everything's right in our face. And you can see our little lift reserve there right up into the yellow. We start getting a little of the warning as we enter into the range. And of course, we get up to our stall speed. And we get ourselves in a nice little death spiral right there. I'll go ahead and do some pair. There we go. Nice. I love the fact the little attitude indicator has got those little red dis digital displays on it. And it's just so much of this is just optimized to keep everything as simple as possible for the pilot so that they can concentrate sort of on the uh, flying around sort of experience if you want to kind of think about it sort of another way. Now, a lot of our digital technology now has really become integrated in everything in piloting. It's on our engine controls, it's on our navigational controls, it's on our instruments themselves. So much of that came out of kind of the late 2010s. And our aerodynamics, of course, have gotten a little bit better with that time because again, it's so expensive. But amazingly, a lot of the engine technology is the same engine technology we've been using for 70 years now. Now, to end this video, of course, we had to pick an aircraft that was uh, very indicative of kind of a modern aircraft engineering. It sort of summarizes uh, everything. And while I really, really wish we had electric airplanes uh, for the purposes of doing this, we do have some electric. There's an electric diamond now, if you want to think about our previous video here. But um, it was a particular aircraft that I think is very iconic for flight sim that really, really emphasizes sort of the summary, uh, kind of the end evolution of so much of what we do. That's if you thought it would be anything else. TBM 930. Now, the reason I like to pick this airplane is kind of our last one here. This is a 2016, by the way, same as the last plane that we saw. It's just how incredible of an evolution it has been uh, since we first started our little journey on this video, if you've been following along with us. So many things have changed yet. So many little things have remained the same. We've got the turboprop propulsion here. We've got this nice swept wing. We have a nice little presence of winglets. Uh, the materials themselves are very, very solid. Uh, when I take a look out the window here, you can see our wings are beautifully smooth. 
We have weather radar capability. We have anti-icing boots mounted to this. Our whole entire back end of the plane or is one gigantic flap that's all digitally controlled. We have the presence of these little uh, wing strakes on there. The interior of this is optimized for everything for passenger comfort. Uh, when I go ahead and get in my seats here, if I can manage to float back here, you'll notice I have leg room here. I can pop up a little table to sit. You'll notice the passengers not only have oxygen, but the passengers are experiencing a pressurized cabin. Yes, there were pressurized cabins in general aviation planes up until this point, but uh, this is one of the few times. Notice digitally above our heads, everything is massively simplified. It's just simple little switches. This is, has got left and right fuel tanks. It automatically switches them for you. And notice our power is a single lever. Uh, we have an emergency, of course, but there's no propeller control anymore that's been eliminated. Our flaps have a simple, there's no degrees here. It's either it's takeoff or it's landing or it's no flaps. Uh, you'll notice our controls and our displays are completely digital now. You'll notice we have the ability to come over here and select certain options. We have separate control panels for different components. You know, if I want to go to the MFD and I want to switch to my weather mode, I can quickly switch between the different radar and navigational modes. Everything is here. I have the presence of an automatic pilot with all all the modes you could ever want on here. I have vertical navigation, I have lateral navigation. And what's even more incredible is just how refined everything about the handling of this plane is. And again, I'm not saying this is the ultimate GA plane. I'm saying this is kind of where we're going. This is sort of where the technology has taken us up to this point. I still give it full power. The plane's nose still pulls to the left. Uh, some things never change, as they say. And of course, uh, we still have to wait till we get to our appropriate speed. But when I pull the nose up, it's like just lifting a feather. And then I gently press the props up control. I bring up my gear, release just a little bit of right rudder there again, a little bit of right foot, just like we did in the first few planes. And this thing just powers up. I gently bring up my uh, flaps and we just go flying up, you know, may angels guide me to the sky above kind of thing, just to give you an idea of the difference here. I have enough information on those displays to fill up every aeronautical manual ever in the 1930s and 1940s. And they're all right there. All I have to do is reach down, press a couple buttons. Oh, wait, I'm climbing. I'll turn on the automatic pilot. Well, wow, that was convenient, man. I would have had to work. You know what? We might as well make it go to the north while I'm doing that as well. Everything is handled by a digital computer here. My All my engine controls, it all is designed to prevent me from overspeeding anything. If there's a warning, it immediately gives me a little heads up so I, as the pilot, can make the corrective action. It even gives me recommendations to that effect. You know, as I'm climbing up and drop to 90% torque, it's uh, reminding me that the inertial separator's on. I can go ahead and click that sucker off real quickly there. I can reset my master warning. And I'll go ahead and pull the throttle back even more. We're a little hot there. And you can see how everything is just conveniently there, notifies you, gives you a nice gentle tone to say maybe you're being a little rough with something. Our navigational radios, all customizable. I can turn on traffic. There's devices that will tell me where other traffic is around me. I can easily hear the person behind me because there's soundproofing in here. I even have the ability to pressurize the plane. That's what that little thing is, just reminding me that's locked. Of course, we have emergency masks here if we need to throw those on quickly in a real emergency that we lose get depressurization. Everything is here. There's emergency and automatic backup systems that will kick in automatically if something goes wrong. And the one thing we didn't see, which I probably should mention in the previous video, is a lot of aircraft, we're too big for this, actually have an emergency parachute system now that I can pull a handle and it'll actually deploy a parachute to let the plane glide down to the ground safely in the event that uh, we had some kind of catastrophic problem that causes us not to be able to land it ourselves. But all of this is at your disposal and fingertips. The only thing I have to do with this plane is get it started and started it just has a switch. There's no drama, there's no oil leaking everywhere. You know, the uh, sound level is significantly improved improved. The aerodynamics are incredible. And if I just were to sit here and press the alt button here and go ahead and level this plane off. The acceleration that this aircraft produces compared to everything we have ever experienced uh, so far in our journey is staggering. Uh, we took that 1960s turboprop, yeah, that one, and we wrapped it around something very aerodynamic. We threw in all these beautiful digital displays that are very easy to access and very easy to control. Everything is very smooth and easy. I think this is a little bit chunky from Yoke's perspective here. I love how the nose trim is like a knob. Isn't that incredible? Um, all this is automatic and I'm just letting the aircraft accelerate and there's 200 knots. Now, if you remember back to our 1940s video, we took a look at our friend, the P-38 and how much work it was to try to get there with those two massive engines clawing at the air and here we are in just a casual single engine plane with just six seats 
ripping along with all the stuff accessible to us. So we have Bluetooth music on this one, by the way. We could get serious. So we could get weather beamed down into the airplane directly so we could see what's going around us. All that is accessible to a single pilot when everything we saw leading up to this point was basically all those things that you had to do and worry about are now just done or they're there immediately accessible. Now, my big conclusion I want to have in this series, and this was a ton of fun to put this together because I get to fly all these different planes, is somebody always wants to ask, you know, what is like your favorite plane? And I've already made that very clear in a previous video. But uh, the key thing here is that it's not so much the airplane. It's, you know, kind of what it represents and what it achieves. You know, these planes are wonderful, wonderful planes because of how safe they are, how easy they are to navigate. I can literally push two buttons and go anywhere on Earth just like that. You know how much work that would have been as a pilot? I can have access to weather. My passengers are warm. They can breathe at high altitudes. All my materials are perfect. We're aerodynamic. We're more fuel efficient based on how fast I'm going. All those things are just there. And in a few years, of course, as the technology evolves, you're going to see electric aircraft. You're going to see hydrogen aircraft. Aerodynamics are going to get a little bit better. But the one thing that has kind of gone away, and this is going to be my little soapbox here, sorry, everybody, is the affordability. It is so expensive. Unless you're going to be an airline pilot or an air taxi or some kind of commercial pilot, you're probably never going to get the experience of owning one of these airplanes or even being able to sit inside of one of these because of what all this technology has done. But it's all kind of a, one of those elements that's it's kind of a balance, it's kind of a balance. You know, air travel is more accessible now than it has ever been in human history because of airliners and things like that. But that sort of, you know, sitting there with the angry propeller blowing oil in your face kind of experience it's kind of gone away, giving way to this sort of uh, technological wonder masterpiece that almost puts all that experience aside so that we can just concentrate on getting to the destination safely. Enjoy.